Starting here, starting now. Uh, let's talk about that. Oh, uh, this, I'm very excited right now. Um, okay, so uh, starting here, starting now started out as a review at MTC simply called Theater Songs by Malpy and Shire. And there they are. There. Looking lovely. We love Malpy and Shire here if it only runs a minute. Um, the year was 1976, and while Moppy and Shire had written many songs and several musicals together, everyone either closed out of town or was never produced, with the exception of their New York debut, a show called Sap of Life, which ran for a month and a half off Broadway 15 years earlier. With their first show, the team had gained the admiration of Hal Prince, Stephen Sondheim, and Jerome Robbins, and greats such as Robert Goulet, Pearl Bailey, and Barbara Streisand had recorded their songs. But the two had never had success in getting a musical to Broadway, or even having a single off, uh, single successful off-Broadway run. Uh, Malpy and Shire met as undergrads at Yale in the late 50s and wrote together steadily until, finding so many roadblocks, Shire headed to California to score TV and film, and Maltby pursued a directing career in New York as well. Uh, after Maltby directed the hit A Misbehaven for MTC, the company and him decided that he would create a review of his and Shire's own work. Uh, and thus, Starting Here, Starting Now was born. Watch it, wanting the show to be more than just a collection of songs, Maltby and Shire worked to create a through-line and concept involving the ups and downs of city romance and second chances. The idea of a review by unknown songwriters was a new one at the time. The title song was written while David Shire was a rehearsal pianist on the original Broadway production of Funny Girl. Barbara Streisand saw the song sitting on top of the piano one day and decided she wanted to record it because she's Barbara Streisand and she can. <laughs> okay, like... That's a dramatization, that's not yeah, actually... Yeah, that's not how, how it went down, uh, but that's amazing. Uh, there, were, there were songs in the show taken from previous Malpy Shire projects, Love Match, which closed out of town, How Do You Do I Love You, closed out of town, Girl of the Minute, unproduced, The River, unproduced, and the previously mentioned musical, Sap of Life. There were two songs written specifically for Starting Here, Starting Now, a song from Cyrano, which Malpy and Shire wrote together in college, several standalone songs written for friends as specialty material, and even a song written personally for Malpy's wife for their anniversary. One song, What About Today, had both music and lyrics by Shire, and was a personal exploration. He said about it, I worked myself out of a depression and a block with that song. It was something I needed to say. Uh, on opening night of Starting Here, Starting Now, the majority of critics were blown away. I seriously sat on the floor, as I usually do, of the New York Public Library reading all the reviews for all the shows, and it literally was like, where have these guys been? What? Why? Why haven't they gotten to Broadway? It was actually like, I never read a set of reviews quite like that in that way, um, where people were like, it's your fault. No, it's your, it was very strange. Um, it's actually, it's very like old Hollywood fable. Um, and from what I can tell from the recounts, you know, the show made a big splash for them. Uh, and producers, you know, started being more interested in hearing their work and staging their shows. And critics, as I said, threw blame all over the place that New York had been wrongfully deprived of these talents for so long. Uh, that's Marjorie Cohen recording the original cast album, which if you don't have it, buy it. It's amazing. In the New York Post, Martin Gottfried wrote, it is ironic and striking that David Shire and Richard Malpey Jr. should be making their New York debuts with a show that is a retrospective of their work. This is a team of formidable talent and theatrical flair, superior to most and then some. Be sore that Malpey and Shire have had such tough luck and grateful that their work can be heard in this lovely production. It's intelligent and exciting with melodic, surprising, playable musician music. New York Magazine adored the show, admiring Shire's eclectic music and calling Malpey's lyrics beguiling, and often dazzling. Uh, that's also George Lee Andrews and Lonnie Ackerman recording the cast album, which is, we really love George's shirt. We love that shirt. Yeah, <laughs> the color doesn't come through, but on the computer, it's, it's like. It's oh. very red. Um, <laughs> it's very crazy, this show, because, of course, we know nowadays, emerging writers almost always do this kind of show first, comprised of songs from shows that they've written that haven't been produced in New York yet. Uh, Malpy and Shire practically invented this animal with Starting Here, Starting Now, and it's very amazing to me that Malpy and Shire's shows hadn't made it, partially because they were doing intelligent and more fresh work than other teams that were making it to Broadway. Uh, as Walter Winchell once said, the same thing happened today that happened yesterday, only to different people. One of my favorite That's quotes. True. There were raves for the three performers, Marjorie Cohen, Lonnie Ackerman, and George Lee Andrews. The original cast album was nominated for a Grammy, and a successful London production followed that also yielded a cast album. Before long, Malpy and Shire made their debut with the musical Baby, and began on several other new projects that would make it to the stage. Starting Here, Starting Now transferred from MTC to the Barberin Theater, which is uh, inside a restaurant on 46th Street um, for 120 performances. And today, that restaurant is Swing 46. You might have had the prefix. 
<laughs> that was your joke. I just stole oh. it. I'm so sorry. Oh, I got more. <laughs> That's good. Just not about that. But yeah. Uh, pretty much the only negative review of starting here, starting now, amidst the raves, get your drinks ready, came from Clive Barnes in the Times, who said he didn't understand the music and that he would never be able to understand a review that didn't have leggy girls and comic sketches. He would hate edges. <laughs> Very few leggy girls. I don't know if that's true, but, you know. Um, he didn't get it. This old review form, which had showcased new and promising varieties of acts, was out in favor of this new one, which focused more on music. Martin Godfrey praised the, th the three players. About George Lee Andrews, he wrote, a superb baritone, a grand performance. Of course, as many of you know, uh, George also holds the Guinness World Record for most performances in a single show, having appeared on Broadway in the Phantom of the Opera for 23 years, or 9,382 performances. <laughs> We're celebrating the whole gamut tonight, all of it. Uh, one of the other stars of the show was Lonnie Ackerman. The Post wrote, Ackerman has a, I love that picture. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Um, the Post wrote, Ackerman has tremendous presence. And the New York Times wrote, she does a crossword puzzle number with a verb that could enchant Mr. Sondheim. That is high praise. That is high praise. Starring alongside George and Lonnie was Marjorie Cohen. The Daily News said, some of the best songs in the show come from those old upstairs reviews. Stairs at the downtown club. See, that's a Merrily reference. Drink a lot for that. Drink a lot. <laughs> I don't recall in all the intervening years having heard the lovely Autumn, here exquisitely sung by Miss Cohen, perched on a high stool. Here to speak about that original production of Starting Here, Starting Now, and sing the Maltby and Shire tunes that they originated, the entire original cast of Starting Here, Starting Now, Marjorie Cohen, Marjorie Andrews, places and Hal Prince was there and Steve Sondheim was there and everybody was there. It was amazing. And so we come out at the beginning of the show in a kind of a black stage and uh, we start the show very quietly singing this beautiful song about that we're going to tell stories about how we're in love. So we're backstage. Lonnie is on that side of the stage and Margie and I are over on stage right and uh, we're backstage and Margie is peeking through the curtain, like this, <laughs> trying to see who's out there, seeing who's out there. I'm trying to get my energy, I don't know if I was trying to get it going or trying to get it stopped, but I'm going like this. <laughs> so Margie, at one point, just before the cue, Margie turns to me to say, and guess who's, you know, something like that, and she turns to me, and I punched her. <laughs> I punched her really hard. I mean, I was going. <laughs> I punched her really hard right between the eyes. Oh, right I there. don't remember. And I she, remember stars. And then, and then there was the cue. There was the cue right then. And I said, Margie, Margie, are you okay? Are you okay? And she's like, yes, I'm okay. I'm fine. <laughs> and she walked out on stage and started the show, and that's how that <laughs> I 
thought, wow, Margie's like we're into the show for like three seconds and she's acting. And I'm like, oh my God, I gotta catch up. She's crying, you know. Like, oh. We haven't even started. I didn't know I was on the other side. Yes. I think you should tell the story you told us in rehearsal. Which one? Oh, the one about Florida? Oh my god. Okay. Before, um, we're here, we're the original three, but we also have the original lyricist with us tonight, Richard Malfi Jr. <laughs> and director. Richard Malpe on the street. I've told him this since, um, and I didn't have anything for him to sign. And I really love Richard Malpe, and he signed my Snapple bottle. <laughs> Continue. Okay. Wanna, should we sing? Do you think we should oh, tell no, that story? Tell the Florida story. The Florida story. You want to tell it? All right, I'll tell. Okay, you tell the story. So uh, we were in this in uh, Florida. 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 Yeah, Florida. Florida. Doing uh, after we had done the New York, we went all over the place, and uh, we had, we, we were in a new theater run by what was like the French Mafia, <laughs> and oh, really? they never paid us, I mean, we weren't getting paid. I was the time. deputy, they <laughs> paid us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, right. finally, right. but I mean, they were always, something was always going on, they, they drove us nuts, and we, our dressing room was right next to the highway, and there was a platform onto a billboard, right outside our window. And we were so frustrated that at one point, we're, we're just like tearing our hair in the dressing room. George and I take off all our clothes. Lonnie starts to, what did you wrap yourself with? Saran wrap right, so yeah. nobody could see me. So, and we, we go out on the billboard over the highway, <laughs> dancing in the nude, like, like little kids. Rather, you know. It was and, all highways. Yes, yeah. all yeah. highways. And the cars, you know, you could They're see people like, you know. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we did on the road. <laughs> I actually closing night of the closing night of that show, what they say about the management there was true. And closing night of that show, we got our paychecks, but they weren't complete. They were like less than we were supposed to get. And I went out into the lobby of this theater, actually, and stood in the lobby and said, Ladies and gentlemen. You saw our show tonight. These people have not paid us for this show. I actually was ranting and raving in the lobby of that theater. And that's where he got his character for Phantom. <laughs>